Uh, welcome back folks. We're going to do another simple pinstriping design. <clears throat> I think this is uh, number 11 in the series. Uh, we're going to be using the Mac triple uh, zero. So I normally use uh, scroll brushes but I'm trying to get back into using these uh, sword brushes. So we're going to do it with a sword today. I got a little paint on the ferrule there. I'm going to try to get rid of that. It's always good to try to keep your fingers uh, clean. That way you don't accidentally get paint on random surfaces. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with an open teardrop. So you're going to put your brush down in the middle. Go outward just a little bit and then start to taper inward and a long line as you're going inward towards the middle. Now you're going to do the same thing on this side. Uh, the color that we have today is uh, chrome yellow with a little bit of orange added in. So we went out, basically doing the mirror image of that other line, and tapering inward, and now meeting in the middle. <clears throat> now we're going to do two other teardrops that are going to basically start at these lines and go straight up. paletting my brush right now. <clears throat> so a lot of the times when you do teardrops, um, you'll have them kind of following the, the line that you just did. Instead, now you're going to follow the grid lines that are going to go straight up. So these are kind of going to be separate entities. So start here, outward, and basically the same exact thing, just shorter. So we're gonna stop about right here. Same thing on this side. Gonna mirror image that other one, so outward, back in. Now we're going to do uh, one over here, so starting at the same spot, out. Now you want to try to keep these the same thickness and width as the other ones, so you stay consistent. And you want to try to start them at the same point. So out, then inward making a teardrop shape. <clears throat> so now you end up with three teardrops and these are not tapering outward, they're kind of following a similar path. They're all going forward. Now this is going to be a two color design so just to inform you ahead of time you are going to be using a different color. Um, I was going to get a separate brush ready but I decided we'll just clean this one off real quick and we'll, we'll grab another color. <clears throat> Alright so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some lines that go outward. So from here something that follows it and then meets up at a point. Now try real hard not to stick your finger in that other one. Uh, there are times where you're just going to have to float instead of having a, a separate brace or you're just going to have to lift your hand up and make it happen. 
So we're going to do the same thing on this side, keeping in mind whereabouts you started, whereabouts you ended, uh, where does it cross, you know, so try to keep it the same. And another one underneath it, and this one's going to meet up at the bottom. Alright, <clears throat> now what we're going to do is clean off this color and uh, fill it in with another color. <clears throat> so bear with me, let me get another color going. Uh, I got an old bottle of Kansas City teal here, so I'll probably use that. Um, the lid got messed up on me, so it wouldn't close, so I just kind of keep this around the house. I just wanted to use something that can really contrast. Alright, so I'm palleting now. And trying to do this super fast for uh, TV purposes, YouTube purposes. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in these teardrops with this Kansas City deal. So you're going to try real hard not to dig into any of that orange and just fill in the gap. Now what I like to do is hit the perimeter <clears throat> the outside of the inside basically and then fill in the middle because at that point you don't have much to worry about Now there are some people that do the, uh, maybe do the teal first and then go around it with the orange. That's fine, that's another way you can do it. This is just one way that you can do it. And if you by chance happen to dig into that, that orange color, you can always go back and touch it up as long as you still hold on to some of that original color. So there you go, filled that in. Now we're just going to fill in these other two. So I'll go around the perimeter there. Try not to dig into the original color too much. Give it a nice point in the middle. Do the same thing on this side. This is where only one having one eye kind of keeps me back because I got to look with my left eye because my right eye is damaged. And I got this camera in my face too. So I'm trying not to elbow that thing on accident. Alright, so now that we've done the perimeter. We'll fill in the uh, gap there. All right. Now we'll do the same thing on this one. So. We'll go around. Give it a nice point. Do the same thing over here. A 
left a little gap. Let's fill that in. All right, now we can fill in the big part. Now, as you can see, I didn't really wait any time for the original paint to dry. As long as you don't reduce the second color too much, you're not going to have any issues with uh, bleeding. Um, the only time you really, really have to worry about that is if you're using a much lighter color for the second color. Uh, something that's a little more translucent might pick up something darker. So if you're doing white over black, yeah, that's there's more of a chance of uh, you dealing with something like that versus these two colors aren't too far off from each other. Pigment wise, I mean they are different but color value is pretty close. <clears throat> Alright, so that is your uh, simple design. Um, you could always go back and kind of add these little horizontal lines or something with the orange or Go back and touch up your orange a little more if you'd like. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, please subscribe, um, like, share, comment, all that stuff. I appreciate it.